So, welcome to My Best 11 podcast. Today we are joined by a man who I know Marv has been trying his hardest since the first episode to get on. And we are so, so pleased to have him on. Um, those people watching on YouTube can see Marv's little homage to him um, on his head, which is fantastic. Uh, today we are joined by Steve Foster, who spent some time born in South Coast. Um, spent a couple of stints at Brighton, a uh, little bit of time at Villa. Luton, Oxford, and won three England caps in his time as well. Steve Foster, how are you, sir? Yeah, fine, thank you. My mum always wanted me to go to Oxford. I think she was me. Yeah, but meaning Oxford University. (laughs) So I phoned her when I was 30 years old and I said, I'm going to Oxford. What did she didn't say? Did me. she get the joke? <laughs> no, didn't, didn't believe me anyway. <laughs> Fabulous. Marvin, how are you, sir? How is it to have Fozzy on here? Well, like people know him as Fozzy. How is it to have yeah. Steve Foster on here? At Please. last, I can say, Andrew, at last we've got, we've got, we've got the man, the, the great man on, he, on here. Um, growing up, obviously coming through the ranks, he was um, the club captain, team captain, and um, played in the position that I played in as well. And obviously, over the years, I eventually got into the team and played alongside him. Um, a little bit um, in awe and nervous at the start. So everyone was scared of Fozzie because he was like the man, the main man. And obviously, but like once you got to know him and um, he's, he's a very, very funny guy. Very one of the funniest guys there is, actually, to be honest. And so it was a, it was a, it was a pleasure to be... Able to play I'm under pressure now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, build it, build it up, build it up, Mark. It's, 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 it's a truth. It's a truth. I did honestly. I yeah, learned Mark. so much from him as a um, as a person and as a player growing up. So I'm I'm honoured to have him on here. Excellent. I'm sure we'll unpack it as we go through the pod. So those people who haven't listened to the podcast before, uh, what we can do is go through Steve's best 11 players he's, hev- he's ever set foot on a pitch with. That has to be a professional game um, and it can include internationals if he wishes to do so. Um, and while he goes through, he's also going to make some statements and he'll try and give us some clues and see if Marv and I have got any idea of some of these players. And as you're listening, have a guess as well. So... We will start off, as we always do, with formation. Um, And I'm intrigued by this. Defenders go one way or the other. Either they go all out or they go a bit kind of conservative and say, no, I'm here to stop goals going in. Steve, what about yourself? Yeah, that was the idea. A bit changed changed now. um, I can't. I believe goalkeeper passes to centre half. Um, I then have to turn round and boot it into the into the stands. I should think. Four four two. How do you reckon you'd have gone to, in today's world? You're saying about booting the ball into the stands. How do you reckon you'd have gone with this playing the ball out and that type of thing? Is that your thing? No, I push up to the halfway line and just <laughs> ping it over the top. <laughs> <laughs> it, it works. We used we used to beat Liverpool, Arsenal, Man United, Everton, <laughs> just playing their half. Yep, quite oh, totally. And you got to a number of and you got to a number of major honours at a number of clubs. So it obviously worked for you. Yeah, I think it's got and, to be a team game. So, Andrew, uh, Andrew, don't don't let him fool you. Listen. Fozzy was a very, very good footballer, but like he's just explained there, right? Why, why take the risks in your own half? He, I mean, technically, I mean, he was sound. I'm sure we get onto it later on, but just go back to the Little Cup final. His touch for first, first goal for Steeny. Do you know what I mean? He, it was a great touch. Yeah, and it was meant. No, I meant to control it. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So we'll get going. Goalkeepers. You obviously play with a lot of goalkeepers in your time. Um, talk us through really? your your best goalkeeper. You can obviously make some honourable mentions as you go. Yeah. Okay. First one, um, over 100 caps. 
I think. Um, had his career mainly at uh, Leicester and Notts Forest. I played with him for England and training was incredible. Um, doing shooting to, to this goalkeeper, he used to just stand there, arms out, and you just never knew if you could ever score. Peter Sheeran? Correct. <laughs> One nil, Marvin. You get you get a bonus. I've been getting battered, Fozzy. I've been uh, he's been killing me. I haven't been getting any uh, any really. And I've been cruising. And I've got to mention Les Seely. Yeah, the cat. Because um, the cat. Well, he called himself the cat. <laughs> yeah. We called him Tiddles. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be allowed to give yourself your own nickname? Is that a right or wrong thing, do you reckon? What? Sorry? The... Should, should, should you be allowed to give your... Because didn't Les give himself that nickname? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, should it, you, is that right, or do you have to be given a nickname, do you reckon? That's why we give him tiddles. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? How, was, how did he take that one? <laughs> yeah, he was all right. I remember in... Uh, we end of season, we went to America and we're sitting by the pool. Um, can't remember what the bar was called, but um, Les had his big cigar and he'd shout over the waitress and said, um, excuse me, darling, I'd like a dozen king prawns. And she said, I'm sorry, sir, we only serve shrimp. And he said, the cat doesn't eat shrimp. <laughs> he drink. he eats king prawns. So I said, Les, Les, please, just, these are enormous. Just go, just, just please try them. He said, oh, I'll have half a dozen. 10 minutes later, she comes back and they're about that big, hanging off a big bowl. And he went, <coughs> fuck me, darling. If that's your shrimp, how big are your king prawns? <laughs> well, awesome. Was that, Good was, old that, was, was, that, was that the um, it was, it was Innsbruck it was? Yeah. Innsbruck, yeah, the golf, the golf place. Yeah. Fabulous, fabulous. But you picked Peter Shilton. So what did Shilton do differently yeah. then? What what made him the top goalkeeper you've ever played with? Um, I mean, he wasn't tall. He was six foot. Um, but as I said, you used to just look at him. And if you were a striker, you just think, how am I going to get this past him? Yeah. And he's done well to get those caps because he, he shared a lot of games with Ray Clements. It's true. So, very great achievement to get over 100 caps. And to play that many times under Brian Clough as well, because I'm sure he wasn't, he didn't take any prisoners no, as well. I, no, he was well respected. <laughs> so, um, Peter, Shil to... Peter Shilton, sorry, Peter Shilton then, um, was he a shouter at you? Or did he, I mean, you obviously coming through as well. Um, did you Did you sit there and go, I've got to listen to this bloke, or did you kind of have to hold yourself? And was he a shout or a quiet keeper? Um, quiet, quiet keeper, really. But he used to wave his arms about, push, telling people where to go, who to mark. It's what a good goalkeeper does. Is that, so that's what you want in a keeper as a central defender. You want somebody to tell you what to do. Oh, yeah, definitely. Especially if you've got to get out of the box. Excellent. Marvellous. Yes, I was going to say, um, Foz, you was a striker originally, um, I believe, correct? I mean, I heard that, but then um, how did that come about? I mean, was that um, something which you just wanted to do growing up as a kid? Obviously, everyone wants to score goals growing up, but I mean, you got taken on no, at I Portsmouth as a, <laughs> as, a, yeah. as, a, as a striker, didn't you? Or no, it was, well, he was at Southampton to start off with first. Yeah, I got re released and then 
I think I got released on a Friday and on the Monday I signed for Portsmouth. Um, YTS. Or and they tapped you up already then, did they? No. Um, I just don't think they realised that they were always going to get released. So they had a good youth team then, Southampton. They had a lot of good, good players. But then um, I played for played um, up front. I did all the running for my two strikers alongside me, which was George Graham and Peter Marinello. So all I was doing was running around, giving the ball to them. <laughs> so uh, I think I played a, quite a few games and then um, I just couldn't score. I could score in the reserves and youth team, but I just couldn't score. Um, so they played me centre half in the reserves. Then they had a couple of injuries and the manager pulled me in and said, um, I want you to play centre half. You can hit the ball. You're good, good in the air. Um, you'll have to give it a go. We're playing York City. And after 20 minutes, I scored an own goal. <laughs> <laughs> I headed it back to the keeper and I didn't realise the keeper was next to me. <laughs> Rolled into the empty net. What was the final score? 1-1. One, one. Okay. I didn't score that. But then um, I, just, I just sort of grew really because they had players like Owen Hand, Paul, I um, can't remember his second name now, but they had good experience centre-halves, defenders, and they sort of helped me through it. So, right. uh, that was it. I then never turned back. Excellent. Excellent. So, we move on to right-back. Um, you play with a number of right-backs at a number of clubs. Who's going to be your best right-back? Um, another player that played at Knox Forest. I think he also played at Man United. Yeah. Sheffield um, Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday. Any more, Marv? <laughs> no, well, Andrew. I'm going to leave it for Andrew. I'm yeah. trying to get Andrew to get... Yeah. No, I played with him at England. Um, he was far the best right back in the country. Um, fantastic engine up and down. He plays a winger and a fullback all in one. I got it, Andrew? Is that Middlesbrough as well? Middlesbrough. He keeps yeah. randomly chucking his names and asking to go to Paul Parker. <laughs> Who? Paul no. Parker. No. He went on to be a coach with... I Tom. can't say his name. Yeah, at Middlesbrough, he was uh, yeah. assistant manager. Assistant manager, I think, went back as... At Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. Do you only fall back on? No, but he didn't play for Man United. Chris, Chris Ramsey didn't play for United, did he? No. You on the you wrong, you, the we had it. So what? <laughs> Go on then. Go on. Viv Anderson. Yes. Correct. What's that? 2 0? Yes. Just wait. Flying. Also, his research. Also, very, very good um, running close was Tim Breaker. Yeah. Tim, Tim was fantastic right back. Great engine up and down all the time. Great crosser of the ball. I used to drive him mad. <laughs> to shout him, I'm sure. Actually, I think his parents come and say, can you just stop shouting at him all the time? Okay. <laughs> Actually, well, Tim Tim's been on it and he, and he says, "Look, you, you 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 did the world for him. You you I mean and low and even Rob Johnson similar so said, look, I mean, it was at the time they didn't understand or realize, but it, they said you made them understand the art about defending first and then getting forward. Yeah. So, I mean, you you what basically what you you was like a manager, right? The first manager on a, on the field, actually on the field." sort of thing yeah because he was orchestrating everything from on the field and you saw everything 
I mean, even Mick talks about it. It's just so, it's so different um, towards everyone else. And so, and, and I think that's a big, it's a big surprise that you didn't go into management um, because of how you saw things on the field, really. Well, I think you'd, um, I think when I went to Luton, the work ethics for everyone was, was fantastic. Um, just probably needed to, defend a little bit better, but we have fantastic players. And it was just getting them, everyone to learn, defend properly. Um, and that was the easy part. <laughs> the easy part. Yeah, no, the easy part, yeah. But, um, that, that's what it was, was, was just organising. Um, one of the other players I later in midfield but um i learned so much from him i can't tell you his name um it's just about organizing but yeah, what's easy. getting on to that then Foz, was that was that one of the things which pleaty said to you when after he tried to encourage you to come and sign for living when you was at villa or i mean what was it he how he persuaded you to come obviously because he was only a short term at villa Is he gone? He's moving. Is he there? Oh, he's there now. You're back. We lost you. Yeah. Where was I up to? I don't, we did, I just asked you the question about Lee coming oh, to yeah. get you. It was, it was really, I think, I think um, David Evans, the chairman at the time, he, he believed in having a spine uh, to go through the, the, the team, which was me, Peter Nicholas, and Mick Arford. Um, but then we had all the talented players around us. And I think that, that that's what helped. Yeah, definitely. The oh. one thing, the one thing, the one thing Dave, David Pleat never told me was we were playing my first game, we were playing for uh, playing against Arsenal at Highbury. And after about 20 minutes, I hit a ball to the left wing straight to David Moss and as it came to him he ducked and it went out for a throw in. <laughs> so I looked at Mel Donaghy I said what was that was that that was a good pass wasn't it <laughs> and Mel looked at me and said Mel looked at me and said Mossy doesn't head the ball I said what anyway half time half time Mossy strolled up the uh, at Highbury up up the uh, up the tunnel, and I chased after him. And because they got the marble floor, yeah, yeah, get up there. So my studs were going like this, trying to catch it. And I got in the changing room and um, started having to go at Mossy. And David Pleat said, "What are you doing?" I said, "He's." He said, listen, Mossy doesn't head the ball. <laughs> and I went, you didn't tell me that when you signed me. I said, we've actually got a player that doesn't head the ball. That's and unreal. that was it. I went and sat on, I sat on the marble stairs for half time. And we went out and we lost 4-0. <laughs> Baptism, welcome to Luton. <laughs> yeah. Mossy, oh. Yeah, next Doesn't week happen. I won't head the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you said to David, I didn't tell you that either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, left back. Um, who are you going across at left back? See if I can pull one back here. Yeah. Um, Arsenal. Uh, Crystal Palace. I think you started at Crystal Palace. Arsenal. Um, best left back we've ever had. Did England. he come to Luton at one stage? No, I don't think so. I think he might. It's not actually. It's not actually but Grimes. It was. He played for no, Arsenal. I, no. I know who it is. I know who it is. I remember um, when we played in the Simod Cup. 
Do you remember that? Yeah. Not many what people want to. But <laughs> before, before the Simod Cup, we went to Marbella for a break. Well, you imagine that, can't you? Um, we, we had a break in Marbella and we came back and we lost 4-0. I think a few people threw their season tickets onto the pitch. But um, two weeks, three weeks later, we were playing Arsenal in the Little Woods Cup. So that week before that game, we didn't go to Marbella. <laughs> we, went to, we, went, we went to Brighton. And we played a, a, like a charity game, went to horse racing, and come back for the game on Sunday. And we got in a tunnel and I was standing um, in the tunnel and I looked round and they all, all had a suntan. And, and this player had burnt his face. So I said, you all right? Where have you been? He said, we went to Marbella for, for the week. I looked at Mick, I looked at Mick and I went, I think we could win this. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you got the player, Andrew? No, not. I haven't got it, no. Um, Kenny Sansom. Correct. Uh, Marvin, Marvin, Marvin. I reckon it's a text message going on here. No, 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 no. Come Marvin, on, you're man. on fire. He? he is on fire. Kenny Sampson. I haven't heard that name for years. Great player. Yeah, yeah fantastic. That's unreal. They went to Marbella as well. They went, yeah, after, yeah. after us. You couldn't that write that. You could not yeah. write that, could you? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Um, out of I mean, interest, did, Luke, did Luton go to Marbella before the Nottingham Forest game? No, I think we were banned then. <laughs> we banned us. We banned ourselves from from Marbella completely. I mean, at the end of the season, the end of the season, fine. Um, not not for a whole week before the cup final. No. Uh, no. Excellent. So centre backs. This will be very interesting. A has Fozzie picked himself, and B, who does he think is? Arguably better than him if he hasn't picked himself. No, not definitely not picked myself. Um, Marv did. Marv did. No, I Marv. did not. No, I did not. <laughs> I also did it. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't manage me either. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Clues. First one played for a bit of a clue. It switch in England. Oh, in easy, and you must have this one. Oh, there's, no, there's, there's three or four Ipswich players played at centre half. I can only think of two. Go on, anyway, carry on, Anthony. Well, sorry, go on. Well, um, he he was um, he set the standard of being a centre half. I thought um, nothing phased him. He was good on the ball. Um, fantastic in the air um, and a true leader and very controversial nowadays with the uh, blood that used to be all over his down his back and everything um, Go to Andrew Do you know what I'm embarrassing now I'm embarrassing myself it's very late at night here and it's early, early morning here. It's age. That's what it is. It's unfor unforgetful with age. Isn't that what we said, we'd say earlier about Mickey, about Alford? All right. Um, he played for... Just so you can't he, he, he played... For, <laughs> he also played for Rangers. Is that right, Boz? Yeah. Oh, Gary Stevens. He played for Rangers? He was in half. Right back. Center half. Um, headband with co covered in blood. Yeah. <laughs> Did he play for Ipswich? 
Yes. Terry but- I didn't realize Terry Terry Butcher played for Ipswich. Yes. I didn't realize he played for Ipswich. Honestly, that's what threw me. The Ipswich. I didn't know that. I did not know that. So where do you associate him with? Who did you think he played for then? Yeah. No, I associated him with, I don't know why, I just had a, you know, you have a player and a shirt. All I had was uh, Rangers. That's all I had him really? for. I know he must have played yeah, for the club. Of course he was. He and of course he was, it, I was only born in 84. That's my excuse. He's younger than us, Foz, as well. well oh, right, that's right. Football didn't exist before the Premier League for my era. <laughs> 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 <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that, by the way. <laughs> Terry Butcher. Um, did yeah. he? Did so? No, did he I make got any stories about him? Huh? I haven't got any stories about him. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> shame. He's a he's a um, he's a very outlandish character, isn't he? Though. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was brilliant. I mean, you know, there's been, I played against him in 1974 for South East Counties, Portsmouth versus Ipswich. I think he spent most of his career at Ipswich. And they had quite a good team to which then. They had Russell Osman. Mick Mills? Yes. No, Mick Mills is a bit no. older. Okay. No. Mariner, Gates, Brazil. Yeah. And the f- midfield player with the Tash played, went to Liverpool. Oh, Walker. Walker. John Walk. John Walk. Yeah, John Walk. Yeah. They all played yeah, for yeah. this South East. Well, they came through as a crop. So they came through as a crop for his South East counties then. Yeah. And we had Chris Kamara. <laughs> Cammy. <laughs> so moving been, on to the other been, centre half, then. Been, play, been, been playing for uh, Portsmouth, which is a naval naval town. They actually he got a trial, and he had to come down in his naval uniform with two chief petty officers marching him down, and he came to uh, to training. Really, and. Uh, after about six weeks, they brought him out of the Navy. Wow, and I didn't know that. When... No, he doesn't like anyone to know that. <laughs> All you have to do is go, I used to, whenever I see him, I go. <laughs> Permission to come on board, sir. And he does that's he doesn't speak to me at all. Are you being serious? No, he's all right. But no. um he didn't like it to start with. I said, but you're in the Navy. He comes across as somebody who can take a good bit of banter, like you see him on Soccer Saturday and all that stuff. Yeah. He's made, he's made a living out of being a, he's made a living out of being a funny bloke now, hasn't he? Really? Yeah. One as funny as his uniform. <laughs> <laughs> he had the big bell bottom trousers. <laughs> <laughs> we got one day we're going to get him on and we've got to see what he says back to this. <laughs> oh, he'll probably, yeah. be, he'll, he'll probably be all serious because, um, don't, I mean, he came, don't mention he came to Luton. He came to Luton, didn't he, Cammy? Um, and he was in the um, Pleated area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, came to Luton. And um, I was, I think was the, yeah, a lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So who's next to Terry Butcher? Um, this is a, quite an easy one. Not for me. Um, played for Northern Ireland. Yeah, it should be, Andrew. Um... Easily the best player I played alongside. Um, ending up at Manchester United. Chelsea. Chelsea, yeah. Uh... Oh, Marv's already got it. Oh, I've got oh, it. Yeah, even, even I'm not that bad. 
<laughs> oh, right. I've written it. Okay. I've written it down. <laughs> yeah, and he played for Luton. Yeah, he did. He did, and he um he lived up the road from where I used to live. So Mal Donaghy. Yes, correct. Yes. What a fan fantastic player. Never, so, never used. To, didn't talk much, but you just knew he was there. He didn't talk, did he? That's true, actually, Paul. He didn't really. Not talk. really. No. No, he, he didn't, didn't. He didn't need. To. No. Didn't need to. He left it all to me. <laughs> <laughs> so you, when you came in, um, what had you heard about Mal? Because obviously he was there before yourself. What had you heard about him, and was he everything you thought, or I oh know he obviously got better yeah, as I, he went on. Um, I think Luton were going through a period of conceding lots of goals, so. If you're part of that and you're a centre half, obviously you want clean sheets. So it was an easy way to play with a back four. I'd attack the ball and Mel would just cut sweep round all the time. That was, and he knew if I was going to miss it, he knew if I was going to head it so he could push up. I think when I played with you, Mo, Mo it was the same, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like like you just said there, I I I, re I realized obviously you being more experienced than myself, that your strengths was like solid defending, attacking the ball, and then I was sort of like more or less trying to sweep round, come around, which you you had to do anyway. It, even if you thought you was going to win it, you still had to come round and come around because anything could happen. You could slip, you could fall. So basically, yeah, yeah that was that was the way how how things went. Yeah. No, excellent. Excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause it right there. And when we come back for part two, um, we will hear the rest of uh, Steve Foster's My Best Eleven. Great. We're back for part two of Steve Foster's My Best Eleven. So far, we've got Peter Shilton, Viv Anderson, Kenny Sampson, Terry Butcher and Mal Donaghy. So he's playing 4-4-2 and... Um, we'll start off in the central midfield, Steve. And how right. are you going to set them up? Um, on the right-hand side, um, was a player that taught me taught me how to, to to be a captain and what a captain has to do. Um, that was when I first come to Brighton, um, and. He actually went into management. I think he went to Luton and then he went to management at Oxford. And I played my last four years. No, when I was 30, I signed for Oxford and he was the manager. Is, it, is, this, is this right side or centre midfield? Yeah, centre midfield. Yeah, right, centre yeah. Mid. right side or centre mid. I've got, you got it, Andrew? Got a couple more. Give me a couple more. Seriously. Um, you played for Luton, captain. Yes. Captain for Luton and yeah. Man City. Oh, Brian Horton. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Oh, he's. He'd, he'd, he'd be shouting and screaming at everyone. The blood vessels were coming out of his neck, and he was. He, he, the funny thing was, it, it would always give him out bollockings. So the moment he actually made a mistake, there was ten of us all shouting at him, <laughs> and he enjoyed that. <laughs> did, but he did you keep you on your toes? Did you ever get the um, the old famous glare? A few players have told oh, yeah. us to run up the, the, the old stare. <laughs> Rob Johnson. Yeah, it was stare. like. Unreal, he said. Marv, he goes, you, you'd, you'd make a mistake and he'll give it to you, and then like the game will be carrying on for a few seconds, and you could just feel him. Rob said, still staring, still staring at, glaring yeah. at you because of what you've just done. And even Ricky, and when I went, Ricky Hill. yeah, he became my manager then um, at Oxford. And guess who was assistant manager. 
at Oxford, Brian Horton. Brian Horton is the manager. Right. Assistant. Assistant manager, excellent and player. Excellent and player. Doesn't head a ball. Oh, really? Mossy was, was there. Mossy. Mossy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I said, I'm Mossy. I think I bounced, bounced the ball off the back of his head once. <laughs> Did you tell the story in the dressing room about your first game for Luton? No, no, I waited a while. <laughs> but he, he, was, he was good as gold, Mossy. Yes. It's the Brian Horton, Horton then. Did you think... Sorry, go on. No, go on. Uh, so, Brian Horton, did you see him becoming a manager? And um, obviously, following his career path, he was obviously for captaincy to management. And do you think that's a natural progression, captaincy to management, or not? Yeah, I think so. It's how to organise and get people, getting the best out of people. Um, that's what he was good at. And obviously, he took that into being a manager. Yeah, yeah. But you, you was good at that, Foz. Was it something you didn't want to do, you didn't want to do go into management? Um, I remember, like, slightly. I mean, to you you was player coach at Luton um, for. As that, I, I did play. Yeah, I did player coach in '87 when we won the Little Woods Cup. Was it '87? Yeah, 88. Was it? 88. 88. And I was assistant manager then, a player assistant manager. And then, yeah, after that, um, Ray Harford was the manager and he needed more support from a, an assistant than what I could give him because I was training, having to play, you know, things like taking training, things like going to watch games, right? Um, Video. So I just then went back to being a player, which was fine. But um, going into management, I didn't really, I know I could have done it, but whether you have certain standards and people, especially nowadays, people don't reach the standard that you, you want, then it becomes hard. Yeah, now, it's funny you say that because we were talking to um, Warren Feeney about Harry Kuehl, um on the last season. And he said something similar that he reckons a Kuehl has expectations that are up here and some of the players yeah. just can't quite reach it because he obviously played at top, 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 top level. Um, and that's why he reckons that some, if you, if you try and manage lower down the leagues, that's why some of these ex-Premier League, England internationals, World, World Cup stars struggle. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But you got to, got to make believe, make people believe, though, especially the players, what you're doing is correct. Yeah, and you have to keep working at it. I mean, I watch the England games now. I don't even know who's going to be playing where, left wing, right wing. They just, you know, we had a system, and system with good players. It works. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Even though, even though Southgate's preaching system before players. So there we go. Um, so next to Brian Horton is central midfield. Um, played for Man U. I played with him at England. Um, he'd also be the captain. Um, I'll give it to more clear. He went on at a later stage to manage, to manage Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. Yeah. Was that West Brom? Yep. Yeah. Fantastic player. Fantastic player. Yeah. And Captain very unlucky. Marble. Captain Brian Robson. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. And I'll give the vice captain to Brian Horton. Because <laughs> Brian Robson was fantastic. He used to love, he used to love just the physical side of it. Yeah. 
I remember kicking him so hard once and he just got up and smiled at me. <laughs> and next minute, I know he's going to do it to me and I had to smile back at him. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, they make them tough up north. Um, they certainly do. And he had, to, yeah, 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 great player. Never, never quite reached his heights at the peak of his career. I mean, he, he unfortunately obviously getting injured um, for England in the 1990 World Cup as well. So never really fully reaching his full yeah. peak there as well. Um, did you ever find that injuries hampered yourself, or would you say you're pretty lucky with injuries? Or I don't remember. Oh. Sorry, I don't remember Fods ever being injured. To be honest, I. I, I got my first break into the team because of Mal. It was like Mal, Mal had a recurring injury um, um, back in yeah, 88 when we obviously read all those games for us and you got to the free, like, I mean, semi-final of the FA Cup, semi-final, I mean, final of the Littlewoods Cup, final of the Simmer Cup. So Mal got those injuries and I, I came in for Mal um, at, for, for the Wimbledon game, but I don't remember ever Foz being injured, injured, to be honest. No. Well, it's like Brian Robson he used to play with a lot of injuries. Um, I mean, the four years I had at Luton was incredible. Uh, we had two FA Cup semi-finals, which we lost both, Everton and Wimbledon. Then we had the Simod Cup final. And then we actually got to two Littlewoods Cup finals. Nice. In the... So we did all that in four years. Yeah. Um, a lot of games. Which was great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Mel, you... Mel had... So... You, you, you managed... were the, the, the tough school, though, Foz. You were, <laughs> I mean, the, you, you were used to have... Um... Your breakfast and those briefings with your breakfast, those big massive pink tablets. You remember those big massive pink briefings? Oh, yeah. tablets? That's a roof. I mean, Mick, Mick used to have them for breakfast as well. <laughs> he did for the two of you. <laughs> well, that was, that, that's anti inflammatories. That was just to get you out on the, on the plastic pitch. <laughs> was it that bad to play on? No, that no, was brilliant. It was good. Yeah, I loved it. it yeah, the main reason, if you pass the ball, it, it, it's a correct, it, you know, it goes where you've kicked it. Yeah. Um, and the good thing about it was all the teams that used to come and play us never wore mo um, studs, like moulded studs. They used to wear trainers. And um, they did, you know, it was so easy to kick people when they got trainers on, you got football boots on. Yeah. Yeah, leave leave the leave the leave the sole of the football boot on, or leave the sole of the trainer on. Which one would you rather? Um, right. So, and also for you, was it easier because you could predict the bounce? Is that what makes it simpler for you? Yeah. I know it comes off a lot faster and a lot higher, but for you, as a central defender, must be simpler. It wasn't well, that bad, that, was it, Foz? No, I don't think it was that uh, bad. I think people in those days watched QPR with their ground where it was like on concrete with a little yeah. bit of. But our, our one was sponge, yeah. two lots of sponge, then the layer, and it would give. So you could turn quite easily, not sort of have to shuffle round. We used to do sprints on there, like doggies, and it was fine. It was brilliant. Yeah. Yep. Oh, those are the days. So going in left or right, whichever one you prefer, left wing, right wing, wherever you want to go. Um, Ricky Hill. Oh, sugar. I shouldn't have said He was a shoe in anyway. <laughs> well, it's between these two. Ricky Hill and your dog. <laughs> yeah. Right. The, the one with Ricky Hill was brilliant. Ricky was so talented. His, his touch was incredible. And... I remember we went to Sweden or Finland, somewhere like that, on a, on a um, pre-season tour. I was, um, I was slightly injured, so I was on the bench. <laughs> and, and the ball went into the crowd, and the crowd were egging 
um, Hilly to come over and get the ball. And he sort of waited 10, you know, 10 yards away, throws the ball, throws the ball. And someone threw the ball to him and he actually controlled it without it bouncing, caught the end of his foot, flicked it up and did around the world, caught it again like that and flicked it back to the crowd. And the crowd were going, oh, that was the first time I've been an around the world ever. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so he's been in every team I think every team yeah. of Luton players from yeah. from particularly the 80s he's been in the team well I, I, it was between two and um, this one I played with him at Brighton and he played for Liverpool came to Brighton he then went to Southampton. Oh, yeah. Uh, got him? Yep. Hard man, tough man. Very, very hard in the yeah. top three, I think, easily. He, and I, I think he played for um, Southampton as well, didn't he? Yeah, Southampton, yeah. The reserve game, he, I, he tackled me in a reserve game and I felt like my shins had gone through like a, a, like a, a, sh a shredder. Honestly, oh my gosh, I was stinging afterwards. Yeah, Andy won't get it. Andy won't get his he's too, he's too, he's way before end of time. Steve McMahon. Before him. Yeah. Oh, he played it. Anyway, he was hard enough, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Case. I, Jimmy Case. He made Steve McManaman look like a pussy doll. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Case. Steve McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jimmy Case, he was brilliant. I roomed with him for three years and he used to wear hearing aids. That's right. He was, yeah, he was deaf, wasn't he? And, uh, yeah, so when we used to go into the room to watch the telly, he'd just take them out, stick them on the side and I'd, I would have to put the, switch the telly off and then wake him up in the morning. But... One trip we went to Lamanga to play golf and we we're supposed to be down on the tee at nine o'clock, but we didn't get into all about six. And um, we both missed the tee, the tee off. Um, we had, and ended up catching up with the, with the play, or jumped on buggies. But then the next day they warned us, said, look, if you don't, if you turn up late now, it was all done with Sky Television, we're doing it. If you don't turn up this time, we'll have to let you go, you know, take you out the tournament. So I think it was about, we had an eight o'clock tee off. So it got to be there for 7.30. And I've gone in the room, Jim went for an early night and Jimmy's laying on the bed with all his golf gear on and his golf shoes. <laughs> The, a big double bed. He had the trolley with his golf clubs on, on the bed. <laughs> and um, all of a sudden, so I just went to, went, went to sleep. All of a sudden, the alarm went on the television for him to wake up. And then he had on his phone, it went beep, beep, so I had the telly going, his phone going, and he had a Spanish phone as well. That started going. <laughs> and then the, the telephone, the telephone in the room started ringing as well. So we got all his wake up calls, and he's just fast, fast asleep snoring. <laughs> so I woke him up, and I went, "Jim, what are you doing?" He said, "Well, I didn't want to wake, wake you or anything." <laughs> he said, "But ah, um, uh, it was unbelievable." And he used to do it on purpose as well. <laughs> just take it here and he would come go go out or something one one of the players he didn't like in the change room or that he just take his ear and aid out <laughs> and that player would know that as well that he's taking it on purpose would he yeah he just doesn't want to talk to you he's such a funny man jimmy case awesome I remember so, sorry go on. On. No. we're in lamanga sunbathing after we play golf and Jim's laying on the bed getting a bit of sun 
and it was Kenny Sampson. Um, there's about three, there's a couple of ex Arsenal and uh, Spurs players. And they're sitting there and they shouted over, Jim, Jim. So I've had to walk over. So Jim, put your hearing aid in. So he put his hearing aid in and they've been shouting. And everyone had been drinking all day. And they shouted out to Jim, Jim, how many England caps did you get? And Jim was laying there, just held his hand up and he went like that. Put his hand down. And they started talking and they're going, oh, I can't remember him playing for England. No, I can't, I can't either. Then they shouted over again, Jim, are you sure you've had, you won three England caps? And Jim went, England caps? Oh no, I thought you meant Champions League medals. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, piss off and leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Took his ear and aid straight out, put them on the side. And yeah. that was done. <laughs> awesome. So on the right hand side next to Jimmy. You don't write me. Ricky. Or was it sorry on the left hand side? Yeah. Yeah. Left hand side. Um played for Tottenham. Um went into management, Monaco. played for England many times. Monaco. Monaco, correct. So you've got him now, haven't you? <laughs> I have. Andrew's probably got him as well. I know exactly who it is. Oh, and... right. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, you have. I'm all Welcome right. To the program. <laughs> England manager. England manager. Yeah. Glenn Hodder. We used to. Yeah. Yes. Go on. You used to... Go on. I'm going to say something. When we, went... when we went to the World Cup, there was a group of us, which was Glenn. Glenn Hoddle, Kenny Sampson, Graham Ricks, myself, and we were like the younger ones of the uh, of the squad. And we used to call him God. That's what his nickname was God. Instead of Hod, we used to call him God. I mean, you play table tennis and he'd juggle with a table tennis ball before he hits it back at you. <laughs> and I, I roomed with him for five weeks. And trying to we were in uh, I think it was up in Bilbao. Um, we're in the first round and we couldn't get the telly to work. So I said, Glenn, do us a favour. Just tune it in with your left foot, will you? <laughs> <laughs> so we got the telly working. <laughs> so Foz, you obviously mean that's um, a fantastic achievement playing um, for your country, but you actually went to the World Cup, and I mean, what was you? What age would you have been there? Like 24, 25, 25. was it? Twenty-five, yeah. So I mean, did, I mean, how did that come about? Yeah. I mean, was you was you in the in the squad on a regular occur, occurrence leading up to the World Cup, or no? What, what? It was just before, just before the World Cup. I had a couple of games. I played in a friendly. Um. But they had so many centre halves. They had Dave Watson, Terry Butcher, Russell Osman, Phil Thompson, Alvin Martin. Oh. So did you do, so, did you expect to go? Did you? No, no not really. But uh, Alvin Martin got injured, uh, dislocated his shoulder, so he couldn't. So I sort of went up the, the pecking order, and then they left Dave Watson, the old Dave Watson. They left him out. And I went in as sort of a late replacement. Wow. And how do you yeah. find out? It's always interesting finding out how people found out they got into the, um, into the squad. How did you find out? Um, I was playing golf, actually. I was playing golf in Brighton, um, finished, and then, because those days, no mobile phones, nothing. No. Um, I got a phone call at home. Then they phoned the golf club. So uh, then he, um, Ron Greenwood told me what was in the squad. It was actually Ron Greenwood who spoke to you then? Yeah. Wow. And, wow. and actually, that was the... Um, then then I went and had a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> As you would do. Of course you would. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that World Cup was probably the... 
the first World Cup, um, which I thought the song, I can remember the song, was it, was it, was it, the song was like um, a really catchy song. This um, this time, yeah, this more time, than any other. more than any other time, this time, we're gonna find a way, find a way to get away this time, getting it all together. Yeah. I was 14, I think, yeah, I remember that. I remember that when we were watching that, 82, Spain, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's- That was um, fun. No, that's, 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 I mean, again, that's when you played against Kuwait, was it? Yeah. Kuwait? Kuwait. Um, the only uh, Brighton uh, player to Terry, get a cup. Terry, Terry Butcher got booked in the first game. So they didn't want to, him to get another book in for the in the second one, which missed, he missed the uh, third one. So I played, I played against Q8. And and uh, is that still the same? The only well, it was the only player Rob Brighton to play for England or play for the World Cup was it was one of the one one of those it was the World um, Cup. They, they've, they've had Lewis Dunk. Play um, Ben Wright. Ben, ben Wright. Wright. Ben White. Yeah. 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 All centre backs, ironically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fab fabulous. So we move on to forward strikers. Right. This one's quite obvious, but I've got to. Uh, he played for Luton, played for Chelsea, <laughs> played for Birmingham, played Wimbledon. for Newcastle, Lincoln. Wimbledon. Lincoln. Lincoln started off at Lincoln. Look at you, Marv Rillam off. You're like his agent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I remember when he said he was he started off at Lincoln when he came on here, Andrew. That's why. Oh, and I remember that. It's just yeah. quite funny how quick you were at remembering them all. <laughs> Oh, I mean, it'd, be, it'd be pretty bad if I wouldn't, would I? It's not Mr. I Luton, any clubs. Mr. Luton himself. It's yeah. not as if I put any right. of your clubs. Mick yes. Arthur. More clubs would than Jack Nicholson. <laughs> would you say that Mick Arthur is one of the hardest strikers you've ever defended against? Yeah. Have you played against him? Well, you would have done far as you would have played, played once. Yeah. At my once. Home career, once. Yeah. Once. I was just shooting in split. training, but I didn't realize you played together, played against each other. Sorry. Yeah. He split my head in the first half and he split my head open on here on the second half. And it was, a, it was his debut for Birmingham. Oh. I was at Brighton. Wow. Lost 1 0. We lost 1 0. What, yeah. what was he, 17, 18? Oh, no, for Birmingham. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I did in my head he was having a debut yeah yeah I thought it then, can, it's not me when I signed for Luton I was sitting there having some tea and the doorbell went we were one of these little guest houses and in walked Mick Alford and I thought oh no he's going to start again is he <laughs> and um, he, he just signed signed for Luton which was uh, which was brilliant Made yeah. a big change. So what did he bring in? Did he bring in, I know you're talking about the spine as well and things like that. Did he bring in yeah. fight and hunger? And what, what, what would you say was the key thing that he bought? Um, respect. Respect for, like he said, respect from his own players and the other players. I mean, Mick Easley was the, one of the hardest, the hardest in uh, centre forward in the country, yeah. and he used He's to love presence. It. Yeah, yeah. I remember playing against Wimbledon, and he elbowed Laurie Sanchez in the face, splitting his face right open here, and got carried off. And we had a corner, and uh, Vinnie Jones, Gale. All of them, uh, Fashionu, um, they're all standing there in the penalty area saying, we're going to have you. And then Fashionu was saying, no, I want him first. And they said, no, I'm having him. 
and they were arguing who was going to beat Mick up after the game. So I was defending the top end when the tunnel was down the bottom and they blew the whistle and Mick was on the halfway line. He sprinted off and went up the tunnel. So I thought, oh, that's Andy. What's going to happen? I'm looking around at Dave Priest, Mark Steen, and I'm thinking, we're not going to get hold of this. Anyway, I got to the bottom of the tunnel and you couldn't get in. All the stewards and everything. Anyway, what Mick had did, he went to the top of the tunnel, hid behind the, the uh, wall, and as they come walking up, he was knocking them out as they were coming up. <laughs> And um, I think he knocked, he knocked a steward out as well. He was trying to stop it. And we had a player called Steve Williams who actually started it all off. So Mick knocked him out as well. He was our <laughs> player. <laughs> so we spoke about Mick Harford just then. So moving on to the player is playing next to Mick. Um, Started his career off at Blackpool. Went to Man City. Went to Brighton. And then went to Liverpool. Any clues? Blackpool, Brighton. Uh, Blackpool, Man City. Man City. Man City. Brighton for half a million. And then Scott, Scott Liverpool. And then he went to Osasuna. Oh, QPR. Then Osasuna. And then he became a TV presenter with his own production company in Spain. I should know this. What nationality? English. Oh. Oh, he played for Ireland, but I think he had an Irish cat or something like that. <laughs> Another Tony Cascarino. <laughs> yeah. Played for Liverpool's centre forward. Won a European Cup. You're a Liverpool. Passed the ball. Passed no, the I'm ball to, Passed the ball to Gordon Smith. He must score. Oh, that's the year before you, were, Andrew. <laughs> oh my God, I'm trying to think. You support Liverpool, Marv. Come on. I know, I know. I'm trying to think. Bright Blackpool, Brighton, Man City, Liverpool. Um, I'll show you a photo. What's that? I'll show you a photo. You've got him. You've done it. You've done me. Oh, yo, Robin, Robert Robinson, Michael Robinson. Wow, Michael Robinson. Yeah, Michael <laughs> Robinson. Look at that for a photo. Um, that's a great photo. We beat Man City, who we'd signed from to Brighton, four 0 and he scored two. <laughs> and I think this. Could Someone said this was at half time. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Robinson, yes, jeez. Should have look, yeah. look at that. Michael Robinson and Mick Arford, why would they work well together? Easy. Rob used to run, and Mick would be flicking them on, and Robbo would get on the end of them. Yeah, yeah. Even though Mick gets a bit of a bad rap for being just a, a big man, incredible with his feet as well. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. Mick, Mick had fantastic feet, and so did Mike Robinson. So they would have been, they could have either done, done what, whichever they um, could have done. Excellent, fantastic. So, and we, I'm, I'm going to, yeah, go on. Go on, I was say we haven't we did we have to, we haven't mentioned it we're gonna have to touch on it because um I mean growing up as a kid it's like 
I mean, playing for your country and also one of the other big things was playing in the cup final. Um, you was suspended for the first game um, in the 2-2 draw, but, you know, came back for the replay. I mean, I mean, what, first of all, talk, talk, talk to us about, like, your um, disappointment of thinking that you're, never, you're not going to play in the cup final because obviously you were, you were suspended. And then, again, the, the, the draw and then having a, an opportunity then to play in the replay. Yeah, um, it was a big disappointment. It was more of a disappointment to my family that I was going to miss the, the, um, the final. But that's life. You have to move on, don't you? So, uh, actually, I wouldn't have played in the replay if Chris Ramsey didn't get injured. Because the team played so well, that you you wouldn't I, I wouldn't have wanted to play, but Chris Ramsey got injured, so it gave me a chance to play. Wow. Um, well, I'm going to ask something around that actually as well before we go to the manager. Um, obviously, you played at Wembley a number of times um, for you, for an in number of cup finals and things like that. Which one would you say? And this is going to put you on the spot here. Which one would you say was your um, favourite time? Your favourite game you played at Wembley? I've got an inkling which one you're going to say. Yeah, I played at Wembley for England a couple of times. Um, it definitely have to be um, Little Woods Cup final. Okay. Yep. Definitely. I wasn't sure if you were going to say your debut or something. <laughs> my, no, my... Um, my kids now, they they love the Hatters. Um, when Mick comes comes to visit, you know, they, they call him Uncle Mick. They love him. And the last time he came round, we showed the last 25 minutes of the Luton game against Arsenal. And Mick sat there and watched it. And it was the first time he's watched it. Really? <clears throat> I mean, I get, I, I get to watch it about five times a week. <laughs> but, uh, but that was Mick's first time. And um, yeah. when you look at that last 20 minutes, incredible. Oh, 100%. And then to, and yeah. to walk up the steps and, and collect a trophy. What, what, yeah. what was going through your mind when you went up the stairs? Did, did you get the grab? Obviously, for the club and the players, did you get the gravity for the team and the fans? Just yeah, it was all for the fans and, and the team. Everything. I mean, um, it was such a short. I was actually thinking it was two two. I think I'm not going to be able to make this. You know, everyone was drained, tired, and then all of a sudden we won. So. You can't remember everything in the game, you know, from years ago. But watching it on the television and seeing the supporters and what it meant to them is is worth worth everything. Yeah, definitely. And where's your medal? Don't know actually. Oh. It was a, it was a it was a little cup. Oh really? So it wasn't actually a medal. I've never actually. Pay attention. No, it's, a, it's a miniature version of the Little Woods actual um, trophy yeah. thing, wasn't it? Oh. I mean, not that I got one. I mean, but I remember yeah. Kingsley showed me his, or oh, he allowed me to touch it once. Well, and and the, and the cup. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I actually, I actually played in a few games leading up to that. Um, you should have um, got one. You would have got one nowadays, wouldn't you? Yeah, you probably, you, you probably would have got one. I mean, I, I mean, played in the the about three Simod Cup games. I mean, we played Stoke at home. We played, I made my debut at Everton away. Um, Man City at home. So, yeah. <sighs> it was um, yeah, good times. Good times. So, like Andrew said, who's going to be the manager then to lead this 11? You've just picked them, Boz. Which is your the best manager for you? Mine. Uh mm -hmm. Used to play play for England. His career was at Tottenham. 
and Fulham. And he was my manager at Brighton. Brighton, yeah. You got it, Andrew? No, go on, keep going. Keep going. Keep going, Mark. <laughs> Alan Mullery. Um, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. I remember him in the World Cup years, late 70s, when he, when he tackled um, Pele. I've, I've still got the photo of that. But he was fantastic. Awesome. So, he, he, he bought me from Portsmouth. Um, we played pre-season. I thought I was going to be playing. Um, and he dropped me for the first game. Well, we played pre-season games and, and we won. And then he left me out for the first game of the season. Then the second um, game, I got suspended because I went out the night before, but I, well, I wasn't playing. Um, so I got a two week fine and suspension. And then the player who took my place got injured. So on the Monday, I got a phone call. I had to go back in and speak to him. And, um, and he said, right, you're playing tomorrow. Tuesday, we got Ipswich in the cup. New plane. I said, oh, okay, but what about my fine? <laughs> and he said, bet you're fine. I'll find you two weeks' wages. I said, well, I won't play then. <laughs> and he kicked me up the arse as I went out the door. And uh, he said, you're still fine. I went, I know, yeah. But he was. Um, <laughs> it's worth a try. Yeah, it's worth a try, yeah. God loves a trier. <laughs> <laughs> but Alan I, Murray. I, yeah. I've I, I've also got something here which the team needs is a goalkeeping coach. Oh goalkeeper, okay. And we we were Luton way ahead of ourselves. We had in that era we had our own goalkeeping coach. Yeah. Who was that? You know. Used to be my driver. Oh! <laughs> Sledge. <laughs> but but Sledge. He, Sledge could, he could ping a ball. Sledge could, he, he, was, mm. he was the first person I... Before yeah. even a professional player who could ping a ball, sledge. Oh, they used real. to train. The, used to train the goalkeepers, didn't they? Maybe yeah. you'd smash them, and they. <laughs> now we'd be on hundred grand a week. <laughs> sledge is it? Is it? Um, it's unreal because you, you look back. He's in Actually, the he's on the, he's on the team he's photo at when. Yeah, he's on the Ray, team photo. Ray Next to him. Unreal. Fabulous. Yeah. Fabulous. Um, so, we've already met, one of the questions we always ask is about your favourite Luton game, but I think you've already answered that yeah. um, with regards to the yeah. Woods Cup. Um, just want to finish off by finding out what you're up to these days. A lot of fans of all the clubs you play for, I know particularly we're speaking on behalf of Luton, but also all the clubs. What are you up to these days? Um, still insurance? Yeah, I've got an insurance company, insure footballers across Europe. It's my own company. I'm a Lloyd's cover holder. The company is. Um, and I enjoy it. I get, well, before lockdown, I had plenty of, plenty of travel. I used to love it. And I've been a PFA a, a business partner for 17 years. So, so still, so still heavily representing the player. Uh, every player, for, there's 4,800. Every player has my policy. Wow. It's fantastic. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, awesome. The PFA. Yeah. Yeah. And um, post-COVID, you're going to keep 
keep getting around some games and do you get to watch live games much yourself? No, not for ages. Watching the Euros, Foz? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Went to lots of goals. Still can't believe I still can't, still can't believe they still pass the ball in the six yard box. <laughs> you be having kids. I don't, I, don't, I, I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. No. Especially with three of you standing in the six yard box, the goalie and the two centre halves. The thing I that I don't understand is. Why don't the strikers move further up? The strikers don't seem to realise we're not offside anymore. The strikers still stand at the halfway line. Yeah, they can't go in the penalty area until yeah. they touch. The yeah, but I, I know that. But I thought they could at least go up yeah. to the penalty box. They don't. They seem to still be quite a way back. Surely you'd realise you can't be offside now. Well, quite a one. Then the keeper boots the ball and your two centre-halves are in the six-yard box. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, God, love it. God love it. Fabulous. So I want to thank you on behalf of myself and Marvin for your time, Steve. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Um, and that was uh, Steve Foster's My Best Eleven.